So Paul, you've talked to me before about um, the magic of this campus and mm. the fact that it was sort of built in a way different from other campuses at the time. Right. Uh, the, the, the lack of a, the, the quadrangle as a, a defining right. feature. Tell me a little bit about how that came about and, and what, what creates the magic of the Mount Holyoke campus. Well, it's an interesting question because it kind of came about not by some grand master plan, but, but uh, driven by expediency. The seminary had a fire in 1896 that forced the college's hand. The correspondence shows that Mount Holyoke wanted to evolve and be more of a model like the other competing institutions at the time and have more of a, a formality to it, more of a rigid rectilinear quadrangle, if you would. But the fire forced their hand. And in a very short time frame, even by today's modern standards, they built these three residence halls, Brigham, Safford, Porter, very rapidly. I think just a series of good decisions, practical, expedient, prudent, made for some special magic. This proportion that uh, landscape architects talk about a balance between building, massive building, size, dimension, height, width, its relation to the trees and the sky. So as we look at Safford, we see some of the most wonderful detail. They, they clearly made decisions about um, where they were going to spend some money, right. and it wasn't all utilitarian. Right. Much of it is decorative. Safford's a great example of what was going on at the time when they built Safford. You can see that it's a classic red brick with brownstone lintels above the windows, slate, copper gutters, copper flashing, a copper dome up there, the architectural woodwork above the entrance there, as you've mentioned. It's beautiful and it was important to them. And I think it helps contribute to the magic of it. Um, they knew at the time that they would be here a long time. They were building, you know, for the long-term future. And it has endured, and right. we still enjoy it today.